do we need to prioritize drivers who are missing organs now in F1 Fantasy? And have I finally cracked the budget code? Let's find out. What is up, everyone? Welcome to another episode of Backup Fantasy Sports. It is Monday, March 25th. My name is Ewan, and on today's episode, we're going to get into some F1 fantasy with an Australian Grand Prix review slash some early thoughts about the Japanese Grand Prix coming up in two weeks here. This video would have been out this morning, but uh, as we all know, it was quite a debacle to get our F1 fantasy teams finalized uh, over, I think, almost 30 hours it took them to finalize the scores, so... It was pretty disappointing because actually over the weekend they were uh, putting up the provisional points pretty quickly. So there was like hope that we might get our scores. But yeah, like I went to sleep. I expected to see them in the morning when I woke up. And then all the guys on the East Coast, even in the States, they woke up and they still were not finalized. So hopefully that was just a glitch. Uh, something went majorly wrong there. Hopefully we will be able to get our scores a little bit faster. But let's not dwell on that too much as it was frustrating but it is over so the review show is out right off the top want to say the deadline live stream for australia was fantastic there were way more people than i thought being awake thinking about f1 fantasy in the middle of the night so we're going to do it again we're going to roll it back for suzuka another deadline live stream coming at you in a couple of weeks so like and subscribe to the podcast and the youtube channel and it will get you notified whenever that comes up um yeah mostly youtube it won't be a live podcast unfortunately like there but yeah as you can see it was a great weekend in australia i jumped up from 348k to 61,000. i did activate my no negative chip so i gained an extra 20 points from the rest of the field that had red bull as i was not penalized by that max verstappen dnf but yeah, wild weekend. But yes, I'll be rolling it back with the deadline live stream for Suzuka. Another deadline live stream. So check it out right whenever it comes out in two weeks. Australian Grand Prix facts and stats. Optimal team here. Ferrari and McLaren because Red Bull had that DNF. Signs with the times two. Leclerc, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Magnussen. Positions gained. Hulkenberg with seven. Ricardo, six. Gasly, Magnussen, and Joe with four. Uh, the Gasly number is a little confusing because like he did gain those places and then got the penalty. Uh, so that is uh, a little strange there. But overtakes a uh, bunch of people with three. Magnuson, Stroll, Piastri, Perez, Albon, Bottas, Russell, all with three overtakes. All these stats are according to F1FantasyTools.com. Fantastic website. Go check it out. Fastest pit stop, Red Bull, 10 points. But then Ferrari came in with the second and third fastest for eight points. Huge, huge day if you switched over to the meta that we were all talking about for a couple of weeks now. We got rid of Max Verstappen. We brought in Ferrari and either Perez, Leclerc, or Sainz, and it was a pretty fantastic weekend for those of us that did that. As you can see here on the left, Ayo Komatsu, he's just got Haas kind of rolling right now, so he deserves the picture for the Australian Grand Prix facts and stats. But the driver of the day, a smooth operation for Carlos Sainz there. Second driver of the day award in 2024. Most driver of the day's award since the 2023 summer break, which I thought it was interesting. So he has the public vote. People like voting for Carlos Sainz. And he now leads F1 Fantasy with 41 points per race. Came in with 46 points yesterday, qualified second, finished first, positions gained one. And he did get that overtake because he... Got clean of Max there on that second lap. And then the troubles uh, started for the Red Bull car. Uh, Max saying that it was just a brake failure. He said it was like driving with the handbrake on with the right rear. So I wouldn't expect that to carry over. If you do have Max Verstappen, I wouldn't worry about it too much uh, for future races. Except I wouldn't have Max Verstappen in my F1 fantasy lineup. After this weekend, I'm pretty sure we all agree that it is time if you were one of the last ones hoping for a Max Verstappen to kind of save your F1 fantasy season, it's time. It's time to let him go. Uh, also, wearing the Ferrari shirt. Was there any doubt that I wasn't going to be wearing this bright, bright yellow Monza anniversary Ferrari shirt the day after they go 1-2? Just spectacular showing for Ferrari there. But yeah, Carlos signs. What a performance. Uh, had a little bit of a feeling that 
Um, he was going to do well. I didn't expect this. Uh, there were some guys on F1 Fantasy X. Um, I don't remember who. Maybe Fantasy Pitwall. Uh, he said like Carlos Sainz coming back from surgery, like driver of the day has to be like in consideration. And I think a lot of us ignored it and I wish we hadn't. So great call by him. Uh, yeah. Let me know if you thought, if you voted for Carlos Sainz for driver of the day. Uh, and if you are thinking about bringing him into your F1 fantasy squads, here are the optimal teams. So I switched it up from last time. So optimal team was Ferrari, McLaren, Sainz, Leclerc, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Magnussen. I already talked about that. And then here were kind of the three main bills that we had for the Australian Grand Prix. Must have uh, was, this is kind of how I filtered it. So a lot of us had... Red Bull, Ferrari, and then one of Perez, Leclerc, or Sainz. So these are kind of where you could go. You needed a $104.2 million budget to build the Ferrari, Red Bull, Perez, Stroll, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Ricardo lineup. And that actually would have scored you the fewest points out of all of these combinations here. Uh, Perez not doing as hot as Verstappen usually does in the Red Bull. He was looking pretty pacey in the first half of the race. And it kind of just like fell off the screen. I don't even remember him being on the broadcast all that much once he got past Fernando Alonso. Um, so a little bit of a disappointing day for the Mexican driver here. But it was really close between Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz. Uh, Leclerc nabbing a beautiful fastest lap there at the end for a massive 10 point swing because signs would have been well and truly clear of him. And I think Leclerc actually would have been the third highest scoring driver because Norris had the fastest lap heading into the final two laps there. But yeah, if you had to have Red Bull and Leclerc, you would have Ferrari, Red Bull, Leclerc, Stroll, Sonoda, Hulkenberg, Ricardo, 102.5 million budget and 246 points. And if you went with signs, that would have scored you 262 points. So let me know in the comments below if you did go with Carlos Sainz or which one of these combinations you went with if you did chase the meta like a lot of us did for the Australian Grand Prix. Driver price changes finally came out and there were some huge swings. Uh, Verstappen going down 0.7 million. Uh, I don't think we'll ever see that again, <laughs> to be honest. Like um, he just dnf'd for the first time in two years so if it's another two years we're probably never going to see this verstappen going down so much but it's encouraging to see that the game is kind of taking dnfs a little bit more seriously as you see here lewis hamilton also fell 0.5 uh russell fell 0.5 felt a little bit harsh because he actually like was he was classified, he finished 90 or 95% of the race just with that crash on the second to last lap. But yeah, huge day for the Ferrari assets. Carlos Sainz going up a million, Charles Leclerc going up a million. Uh, Lance Stroll, huge bounce back. That is the second year in a row that Lance Stroll has DNF'd in Saudi Arabia and then had a huge F1 fantasy performance the following uh, race in Australia. So maybe we need to think about that next season uh i will probably forget and uh i will be frustrated with myself when i jump on lance stroll for saudi arabia again but he's now up 1.3 million on his season so these columns hopefully it's not too complicated so i added an extra column this week let me know in the comments below if you do not like this format i will go back to the old one so i've got the starting price for the season i've got the australia price the Japan price now, and then the price change column is saying the price difference from Australia to Japan. So that's kind of the weekly price change. But let me know in the comments below. Happy to make some adjustments here. But yes, yeah, some major swings in the top 10 drivers here. Mercedes, got to say, they are an absolute no-go right now in F1 Fantasy. If I was going to, if I had to have one silver arrow in my lineup, it would be George Russell. I think he's getting the most from that car. Um, it's kind of sad to see Lewis Hamilton acting this way, um, and just driving so poorly. I understand the car is bad, but he is just, he doesn't seem to want to settle for where he, where the car is at in the grid. And that's un understandably frustrating for a seven time world champion, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's just not getting it done. And if he keeps taking these huge risks, like he was one of two drivers to start on the soft tires yesterday. Um, yeah, just really unusual gambles for Lewis Hamilton. 
Um, but he has to be looking at that <clears throat> Ferrari thinking, um, yeah, looking forward to driving that car next season. So uh, maybe a great call by him. But yeah, for 2024, as of right now, three races in, uh, Lewis Hamilton, total no-go. Mercedes as a constructor, total no-go. George Russell, I still have a little bit of hope for, 18.7 million. But with Piastri and Signs, just 1 million more than him, like... Yeah, I would. I'd probably go with Alonzo over George Russell, to be honest. But Russell would be my favorite Silver Arrow if I had to roster one from Mercedes. Bottom ten drivers here: Ricardo with a bounce back race in his home race. Uh, it really wasn't that spectacular. I was kind of surprised to see him go up zero point five million. But you know, he had he did what he had to do. He kind of climbed the ranks. There were some de surprising DNFs there. So <clears throat> the Australian driver did get positions gained and some overtakes there. Esteban Ocon falling 0.2. So after a couple of great 0.5 races for Esteban Ocon, he fell. Sonoda with a bounce back race. The Haases continue to fly. What can they not do at this point? Scoring double points for the first time since 2022 Austria uh, when Mick Schumacher was in the team. So yeah, it's been a while for Haas to score double points, but they are flying right now and they are the they are the best budget pick in f1 fantasy so if you can get on the american outfit or the european drivers that they roster i would highly recommend it for japan and just as a side note we do not be no early transfers there is no benefit to early transfers in f1 fantasy just Wait for the info. Wait for FP3. Join me on my live stream. That is going to be a little bit of a more acceptable time for us Europeans in a couple of weeks. I think it's going to be about 7, 8 o'clock in the morning. I think qualifying for me is 9 a.m. Germany time. So that should be, yeah, like 8 a.m. stream, 7 a.m. for the Brits. Uh, East Coast America, not so much. It will be a little bit of a rough watch. Wherever you're on the West Coast, tune in. This is just a, some late night F1 fantasy. Um, but yeah, so another, like all the other budget drivers kind of only fell 0.1. Albon falling 0.1 was a little disappointing. I did have him. Australia is usually a pretty good track for him. The tire whisperer scored points here last year. Gasly as well. I really thought the Alpine was going to kind of bounce back. And Gasly did have a good race, but pit stops or something I, I don't know what the strategy was there but at one point when he was when he didn't pit at the very beginning i think he was up in six and like the pit stops and then it just it was going from bad to worse and they got a pit lane exit time penalty so yeah it was a little bit of self-inflicted wounds for gasly there but i really thought he would bounce back with maybe a 0.5 kind of jump there but I will probably hold on to him for Japan. I have two free transfers for Japan. I think as of right now, uh, I mean, I'm going to get to it, the team selection here. So stick around for that. Uh, just like an early thoughts video here. But yeah, Gasly falling point one. That was a little bit disappointing. But if you had Sonoda or either of the Haas assets, good job by you. Constructor price changes. Red Bull didn't go anywhere. McLaren 0.3. Ferrari with the biggest jump for a constructor this year. That's a million. So we haven't seen anything like that before this season. Aston Martin, uh, Racing Bulls, and Haas all going up 0.5. Haas probably deserved a 1 million, but that would just kind of shoot them all the way up. Um, but yeah, a lot of us now are on Red Bull and Ferrari. Uh, McLaren's an option too. They had a great weekend. As you saw, they were an optimal team. I even tweeted out that like, if McLaren were slightly closer to Ferrari, they would be an option. Um, but luckily I did not go with that route as Ferrari did up, end up scoring about 40 more points than McLaren this week, but they are creeping into my thoughts more and more. This was a track that was supposed to suit them. So we have to keep that in mind. They don't have any upgrades coming in the near future, but when McLaren do get those upgrades, we need to think about them as a serious contender for that second constructors spot. Uh, RBR bouncing back for the first time this season after a couple of dismal races to start the season. Uh, yeah, so use a cash app. Had a pretty good weekend. So Noda rising, Ricardo rising, the constructor rising, them and Haas, kind of the cream of the back marker crop so far. Cracking the code. Okay, so this is not an exact science, but I wanted to get this on paper because I was noticing a couple of trends 
for the back markers in F1 Fantasy. So in Bahrain, there were drivers who rose 0.5, and then I think the premium drivers, which is like Piastri and above, they, those guys rose 0.3. Saudi Arabia, the back markers also rose 0.5, and then the premium guys like Perez and Leclerc and Ollie Behrman rose a million. And then in Australia, we had more premium assets rising a million, but all the back markers seem to kind of be staggered into a 0.5 million bracket jump. It uh, doesn't seem like anyone can go that much higher. Lance Stroll is a weird in-between as he's risen a million after Australia, but so I don't really count him as a budget pick. So in Bahrain, all the drivers who rose 0.5 million, they missed Q3, they cost less than 11 million, and they scored 7 to 11 racing points, which I was classifying as positions gained plus overtakes, and they all finished between 0.7 and 1.7 points per million in that race. For Saudi Arabia, all the drivers who rose 0.5 also missed Q3. They cost less than 8.3 million. They scored 6 to 8 racing points, and they were between 0.9 to 1.5 points per million. And in Australia, drivers who rose 0.5 million, three of the four missed Q3. That was Sonoda who lapped into Q3. They all cost less than 9 million. Three of the four scored between seven to nine racing points. Sonoda actually only scored two racing points. Most of his came from qualifying and his actual race position, but they were all between 0.9 to 1.6 points per million. So the thing... Like, th this is not cracking the code. This is just some trends that I've noticed. So in the F1 practice debrief that we get after the first and second practices each weekend, we really need to be looking at this qualifying data, see who's going to be down in the depths of qualifying. Like, that's kind of what's sealed the deal for me to go with Pierre Gasly. Um, I'm going to do a little bit more work on this, and it will come out uh, next week in the Japanese Grand Prix preview. I will hopefully have it a little bit more nailed down, see if I can find any more trends, like maybe with the premium assets. Uh, but yeah, this is just some general findings from me. So like the trend seems to be that your driver doesn't get into Q3. They are a back marker and they kind of just rise up through the field on Sunday. So if you can kind of predict that, take a guess at that, you have a good chance of growing your budget. So here is the backup fantasy sports T1 team that is now top 61K, 62K in the world. Uh, huge jump last week. That was uh, felt really good to kind of leap back into the top 100K. Let me know how many points you guys scored in Australia and what your rank is so far this season in the comments below as you like the video and subscribe to the channel real quick. We're only 20 subscribers away from 300. We are flying right now. So any support has been super appreciated. And if you want to join the community, join my league right there with the league code. Greatly appreciated. Come on board. Hit me up on X at UNFPL. Uh, yeah, all is welcome. As you'll see, I literally respond to every single comment on the YouTube video. So any question, any kind of query is welcome in the backup fantasy sports video but here is the squad that got me back into the top 100k so far this season charles Leclerc two times lance stroll pierre gasly valtteri bottas alexander Albon, red bull racing and ferrari i have two free transfers there are about 11 days and 11 hours to go until lineup lock so there we are the valtteri bottas problem is a issue i still believe that gasly is like one race away from rising a million so i'm probably going to hold him uh for now but this this valtteri bought us thing i what are we gonna do with this guys like sauber in the pit stop is awful like one one point on the season zero points nah, just no please and like he keeps falling i got him at 6.2 he's cost me 0.3 now um albon i'm hoping he can come back suzuka trying to remember how Williams did in Suzuka last season, but um, everyone seems to love racing there. So hopefully that Williams can uh, get the extra chassis so they can get two cars out on the track in a couple of weeks. But yeah, Albon probably I'd like to hold him because I feel like he could, if that Williams starts to show form, I think he could start to really rise as well. But the problem is I've only got 0.8 in the bank 
So I literally can't do any. I'd have to go with Logan Sargent, which I'm not too thrilled about uh, as he just had to give up his car. So the other option would be kind of, I mean, if I got rid of Alex and Valtteri, I could go to the overtake King and that would still, still leave me short. Bummer. Okay. So yeah, I think I'd have to sacrifice Charles, which I don't really want to do, but with the way that Carlos Sainz is driving right now, like there is an option here where, and Piastri was kind of sneaky good too, to be honest. So that would give me 2.4 million. That would give me Carlos Sainz, and that would get me out of kick sauber hell, and I could get up to almost whatever I want. I could get up to Yuki there, and that's pretty nice. Uh, if you ask me the other option that I'm also, so I would go Leclerc to signs and, uh, Bottas all the way up to Yuki who seems to be rising. Uh, he is honestly kicking Daniel Ricardo all over the track right now. So, uh, he's definitely the Red Bull racing driver or he's a cash app driver that I would want in my team. But the other option here is if we go back to what I had, Charles, and Valtteri. Let me know what you guys, your early thoughts are for your Australian Grand Prix build. Is a 0.8 jump, I could just go from Pierre straight to Yuki. Um, Haas is flying, so it is kind of tempting to go with those guys as well and ride the wave while it's still hot before development season. Uh, Kamatsu has got that team kind of humming right now. Uh, but we'll see. There's still two whole weeks. I think teams are starting to bring upgrades. Red Bull possibly bringing their zero pod concept for this race. But after the brake failure, maybe they'll push that back. We'll have to see how that goes in the uh, over the next couple of weeks here. But this is something else I could do. The problem is it would just keep me with Valtteri Bottas. I really don't want Kicks Albert in my team anymore. Oh, man. Yeah, so kind of like lots... Lots to think about, but that's kind of where my head is at with the early team thoughts. What do you guys think? Like, is it worth getting signs into the team to get extra budget? Is getting rid of Kick Sauber a priority or is kind of switching back markers not the best thing to do? I just, I'm so sick of watching those Kick Sauber uh, pit stops. Uh, yeah, a, a Kick Sauber pit stop is almost as long as it took F1 Fantasy to get these results out for the Australian Grand Prix. So some early thoughts from the Australia Grand Prix and some early transfer thoughts ahead of the Japanese Grand Prix. One more reminder for the deadline stream. Uh, there'll be another video next week for the actual preview episode of the Japanese Grand Prix where we'll go into like the previous results and like any more findings that come out over the week. Maybe I'll dig into this cracking the code thing that I started and try to get you guys some more nailed down statistics when it comes to that. But yeah, there will be a deadline live stream. So set your alarms for a couple of Saturdays from now. But yeah, just want to get my thoughts out there while it's still fresh in my head. It was a fantastic weekend. Really enjoyed the Australian Grand Prix. Uh, even though the action wasn't amazing on the track, there was still a ton of stuff going on uh, in F1 Fantasy. Like, yeah, I mean, I used my no negative. Probably should touch on that earlier. Uh, if you watch Deadline live stream, kind of woke up thinking that there would be chaos in Australia like there was last year. So just played it. Saved me 20 points. Um, I think that's a bunch more than it saved me last year. I think I only saved like two or three points when I used it last year. So using it on a DNF and a very popular constructor, is uh, not a bad way to go. Let me know if you guys use any chips and if you are planning to use any chips for Japan. I know some people are kind of itchy to get that wild card so they can get the meta teams in place for Suzuka in a couple of weeks. But hopefully you guys enjoyed that video. Let me know in the comments below while you like and subscribe to the video. Follow me on X at UNFPL and yeah, have a great week and I will uh, be back next week with a Australia or a Japanese Grand Prix preview. 
But once again, thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. And I will talk to you next time. Mm-hmm.